Welcome to our worship service. We're so glad you joined us today. This week, we're continuing our ser series on family ties. Last week, Chris gave us the good news and the bad news. The good news is church is a family. And the bad news is church is a family. You know, this week, we're going to look at family values. And uh, we're going to look at really what is the foundational aspect of God's family and how we can build deep, connected relationships with one another. You know, in my family, uh, we have household rules and we have similar beliefs and culture. But just because uh, in our family we have rules and we have beliefs, it doesn't necessarily that mean that we're emotionally or relationally connected. And so today we're going to look at some things that we can do rather than just kind of being together, but things that we can practically do that can build um, connection, that can build on um, the kind of the prominent or preeminent family value uh, in God's family. You know, uh, in Matthew chapter 22, verse 36 through 40, it gives us the great call um, and the great commandments. It says, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. And these are the, the two laws that fulfill all the rest of God's law. These are the, this is if there was a kind of preeminent family value in God's family is that we all love God and that we all love one another deeply from the heart. And, you know, no matter what kind of rules we have, no matter what kind of um, structure we have or belief systems that we have in common, if we don't have um, a deep, connected, loving relationship with one another, there's going to be some dysfunction. There's going to be some struggle. It's going to be impossible for God's family to be a happy, healthy, spiritual family if the foundational spiritual value is not our love for one another. And so today I want to talk about three ways that we can build deep connection in our relationships with one another and really um, uh, live out God's preeminent family value in loving each other. You know, in Mark chapter 3, uh, verses 13 through 15, as it was talking about Jesus and starting his ministry, you know, one of the keys was uh, here in verse 13, it says, Jesus went up on a mountainside and called to him those he wanted, and they came to him. He appointed 12 that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and to have authority to drive out demons. You know, Jesus called his disciples, and one of the most important things was for him that they might be with him. You know, you see, Jesus knew that it would take walking with his disciples, doing life with his disciples to build their connection and their loving relationships um, with with him and with one another. You know, this was not an easy group to teach to love one another. I mean, I think when you look at the makeup of this group of uh, fishermen, there was a, a zealot, which was kind of a super conservative uh, fundamentalist, almost a terrorist group that would, you know, assassinate Roman officials trying to overthrow the Roman government. And a former tax collector for the Roman government. These were not necessarily easy relationships or easy connections to make. And yet Jesus knew that the key to them starting to uh, build these bridges and connections with one another was that they would have to spend time together and time with him. And I really believe that that's one of the keys to building deep, meaningful connections in the family of God is that we spend meaningful time with Jesus, but we also spend meaningful time with each other. And I, I look at Jesus' uh, disciples and how they built family on that principle of loving each other. And they experienced the storms of life together. They experienced the, 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 the crowds together. They experienced uh, the miracles together. And those combined shared experiences and being together is what brought people from varied um, backgrounds, political perspectives together um, in, in deeper connection and relationship with one another. You know, as we think about how we can imitate Jesus' plan um, to connect us and to have 
that fundamental family value of loving each other. You know, one of the things that comes to my mind is just finding ways in the midst of COVID to really connect and spend time together. So maybe uh, consider uh, taking up a prayer partner. You know, I think it was so good a couple of weeks ago, I just uh, called Lou Foster and just said, hey, Lou, let's, let's, let's go out and just grab some prayer time. And so we went outside, we had our mask on, we kind of kept a little distance there and we just kind of walked and talked for a little bit. And then we just kind of walked and prayed together. Uh, we, we prayed with each other, we prayed for each other and our families. And, and I just felt better uh, about life after that. I just felt more connected to Lou. And, you know, I think we, we need to find ways to maybe get our small group together, maybe just the men or the women and, you know, practice social distancing and all the guidelines uh, that are kind of applicable where you're at. But, you know, we got to find a way to not lose that connection in God's family you know, maybe invite a few other um, disciples to watch church or another family to watch church. Um, you know, I know where we're at, it's try to keep it to 10 people or less and social distance and masks, uh, but we can still do that in, in really small groups. You know, maybe reinstitute date night for you married folks out there, you know, and just try to pick another couple to, you know, do parks or picnics or um, patios uh, and just do dates with other couples. You know, you can social distance and, 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 and try to be safe. But we've just got to find ways to stay connected during a time that can be so filled with isolation because it's imperative to our family values, our family values of loving one another and being connected. You know, it's interesting because, you know, when I was in the military, you know, just joining the Navy didn't connect you with your shipmates. You, you didn't just get close. You know, but when you went on a mission or when you were in the midst of these stressful situations, um, you know, it was actually the mission and our shared experiences that kind of built a bond in brotherhood. And I really believe the same is true um, in the church. I think it's our shared mission and purpose as well as our shared experiences when we go through hardship or stress together in our, in our lives together. And I think that's what really built such a strong, loving relationship amongst the disciples of Jesus. It's not that they all grew up in the same way or believing the same way or having the same political affiliation, but it was their shared experiences, their meals together. It was, um, you know, the storms that they endured together. It was fishing with Jesus. It was, you know, surviving the hunger and the crowds of being a part of the ministry of Jesus. All of those things, I think, those shared experiences and missions really tied them together. And I really believe now more than ever, we really need those shared experiences. And so I just want to encourage all of us out there, I mean, we've got to fight for our family values and there's no value greater than our love for one another and there's nothing that helps us make that deep, loving connection with one another like finding ways to safely spend time together. You know, the other thing that I think about when I think about Jesus and the way that he built family and, and that around that family value of loving others and loving each other was just his heart to serve. You know, I think about in Matt, excuse me, in Mark chapter 13 and verse 45, it tells us that Jesus didn't come to be served but to serve others and give his life as a ransom for many. You know, I think about 1 Peter 4 that says, whatever gifts that we have received as Christians, we should use them to serve other people. Or in Galatians 5, as Paul was talking to the church in Galatia, and he says, hey, you need to serve each other in love. And I really believe now more than ever, we need to really connect through serving each other and serving with each other. You know, more than ever, we need a heart that looks out and hands that reach out. You know, when we think about a, a heart that looks out is, you know, it's so easy to be consumed. I know, man, I'm just, our kids are remote learning right now. They were supposed to do some kind of hybrid and at the last second, uh, their school couldn't pull it off. So they're fully remote. And man, it's a little, it can be a little intense in the Ryan household. Like uh, in the first couple of nights, Josiah uh, was on his computer like 12 or 13 hours doing class and homework. And, and it was overwhelming. Um, for him and for us as we tried to help him navigate those type of things in his first year of high school. And so, you know, I know that we're dealing with a lot out there and it's just easy to get self-focused and kind of into ourselves. But really, if we're really going to have connections in the body of Christ and the family of God, 
it's going to take a heart that looks out, that looks beyond our trying circumstances to to see how other people are doing and to to meet those needs and and really to have not only a heart that looks out but hands that reach out to to act, the willingness to help and share or serve uh, what we've uh, been given by God with others. And so I want to encourage you, you know, to to not only spend time with each other but look for just ways to serve, ways to help um, each other and the, in the body of Christ and our communities. Um, more than ever, there's people losing jobs and there's neighbors and friends and family that if we look out of our own difficult situations, we'll find, honestly, people in even more difficult situations. And we, looking at helping others helps us to be grateful for the things that we have, as well as gives us an opportunity to share the grace and love of God that God has showered upon us. You know, finally, another way we can build connection and deep relationships is through encouragement. You know, uh, one of my favorite scriptures is in here in Hebrews uh, chapter 3, verse 13. And it says, Encourage one another daily as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. We have come to share in Christ if we hold firmly till the end the confidence we had at first. You know, I love this scripture, um, and I've heard it in so many lessons over the years. There's so many sermons and lessons I've heard, devotionals I've heard over the year, um, um, and I've heard that that scripture talked about. And, you know, see to it, brother, that you know none of you, you know, has a sinful, unbelieving heart, but encourage one another daily as long as it's called today. And actually, for me, this is probably one of the scriptures that I've heard preached the most, but practiced the least. You know, when we think about daily, what do we do daily? It's really hard. It's hard to be consistent, whether it's prayer times or evangelism or uh, reading our Bibles or serving others or having family devotionals or whatever. Anything we try to do daily, exercise, man, it can be hard to get started. And if you get off track, it can get hard to be, it can be hard to restart uh, and hard to keep going. Life gets in the way. But there's one thing that the Bible really does call us to do, and that is to encourage one another daily. And uh, it says, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. You know, encouragement keeps our hearts soft. And I think it's important to know not only that we need encouragement, but other people need encouragement. I think about the uh, Proverbs 11.25, where it talks about those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. And and this season of isolation, of challenge, of sickness, of um, kind of economic insecurity, of, you know, kind of an insecurity of health, of, of government, of all these kind of things, more than ever, uh, we need to help each other find strength in God. We need to encourage one another daily. We need to make it our goal to every day reach out and just build somebody up or lift somebody up. In a, in a climate sometimes that can be so negative, that can be so um, directed towards tearing others down and each other down, man, we need beacons of light in our families, in our communities of people who build up, who encourage, who notice the good. And we need to do that, not just in, in, in our own families, which is super important in our marriages to hold up what is good, in our husbands and wives, in our kids to not just correct them when they're wrong, but to, to praise them when, and celebrate them when they do good and right. And same thing in God's family. We can be critical a lot. There's, we have lots of problems. We have lots of sinful, broken people in God's family. And that's why it's kind of like, you know, the good news about God's family is it's, it's family. And the bad news about God's family is it's, it's, it's a family. It's, it comes with warts and scars and dysfunction. But in that, you know, sometimes we can be so critical rather than to be encouraging about what God has done and will do and can do through imperfect people and imperfect families. And so I just want to encourage all of us, we need to put this into practice. This, this doesn't need to be something that is preached a lot. It needs to be something that truly is practiced a lot in our Christianity. You know, today I just want to leave you with encouragement as we kind of transition to communion. When I think about family, I think about my physical family and our family values. And I I think about the first line of the Rhine family vision statement. And it says, by the grace of God, 
The Rhine family exists to live a life of love. And that's our foundational family value. And it's also the foundational family value of God's family. So today, I'm just calling you, if you're seeing this as we take communion, you know, I want to kind of appeal to you uh, to, to recommit, to repent, to walking together with others, to vulnerably sharing our lives and to committing to finding ways, even creative ways, uh, with all the restrictions to, to not um, be isolated, but to find ways to be together and share our lives together. You know, I, I want to just call you to recommit and repent in serving others, to have a heart that looks out to the community and to other disciples and to friends and family, and also the hands that reach out and really act and help and serve and share with others. And lastly, to just encourage each other today to to put it on your heart and your mind and on your to-do list to reach out to someone every day and to build someone up. We can start with our wives, our husbands, our kids, our neighbors, our friends, our co-workers, our classmates, but surely somebody else in the family of God, another disciple in our small group or in our ministry that we can kind of reach out to and build up. We can think of somebody every day that we can reach out to because without walking together, without serving one another and serving with one another, without encouragement, consistent daily encouragement, you know, we're not, we might have the same rules that we're trying to follow. We might have the same culture. We might have um, the same um, beliefs, but we're not going to have the most important thing, connection. Connection with God, connection with one another. So today as we take communion, I just want to call you to God's greatest family value, to love each other to love the family of God, and to share that love with as many people as possible. Let's pray for communion. Father, as we come before you and we think about the body that was broken for us and the blood that was poured out, and as we think about the demonstration of your love um, that the cross really is, it really is a demonstration of your love for us, that you loved us so much that Jesus would be willing to die that horrible death for us. And as we think about all the things you were willing to do as Jesus walked with his disciples and he died for his disciples and he served his disciples, as he washed his disciples' feet, God, and as he encouraged them um, to see something in themselves, I think about just Jesus with Peter calling him the rock. And God, I just think about um, just all the things I see in Jesus and how he believed in those disciples and all of their flaws and all of their doubts. He never stopped believing that they could change the world. God, help us to imitate Jesus in our ability to walk with one another and share our lives and our memories and meals and miracles with each other, God. Help us to uh, serve one another and serve with one another, God, and help us to build each other up and to uh, see the best in each other during this time, God. As we take communion, help us to reflect on you and the incredible salvation you've given us through the cross and help us to recommit to these things. We just love you. We thank you and we pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen.